Hey everybody, this is Dr. Karen Sullivan with I Care for Your Brain, board certified neuropsychologist. There was some topical news, brain health news uh, recently that came out and I thought, well, let me pop on here after a day of seeing patients and we can discuss it a little bit. President Trump has a new medical diagnosis. This is called venous insufficiency. And there's a lot of political noise that is surrounding that, but this is a condition that affects millions and can quietly damage your brain. Now, of course, I know nothing about the personal health records of Donald Trump. I am simply sharing that as a neuropsychologist who assesses brain health every day, one of the sneaky culprits that I look for is this exact diagnosis. So what this means is that there is poor circulation in some of the smallest blood vessels in the body. Where circulation is compromised, what that means is we don't get enough blood flow to the area, which reduces the amount of oxygen and micronutrients. So what is important to know here is that the diagnosis was pointed out because he had a swollen ankle, a swollen lower leg. And in neuropsychology, one of the things we often think about is that what happens in the feet actually happens in the brain. Similarly, what happens in the eyes happens in the brain. What happens in the kidneys happens in the brain. And this is because they all share the same diameter of blood vessels. These are about the width of a strand of hair. Can you imagine that? The blood vessels that are in the heart and even the carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries, we could see them with the naked eye. The ones that infiltrate the eyes, the feet, the kidneys, and the brain are so small that you would need a very high-powered microscope in order to see them. So when we see that there's blood flow issues in other parts of the body that relate to those four parts, we often then wonder what is happening at the level of the brain. And it can suggest that there is a risk of vascular brain change. This is not just a leg problem. The way we would really think about this is this is a systemic vascular problem that indicates poor blood return back to the heart, which can affect circulation everywhere. The brain relies most heavily than any other organ in the entire body on the consistent influx of oxygen to the brain and the ability of blood to then pour waste out of the brain. If veins do not drain efficiently, so think of the name of this diagnosis, venous insufficiency, it can contribute to low level congestion, inflammation, and over time, these things can cause blockages, which increase the risk of stroke or things like vascular dementia. So the risk factors for these type of condition, first of all, is age. Next one is hypertension, then we've got diabetes, and then we've got sedentary lifestyle and poor food choices, namely processed foods. Reduce blood flow into the different parts of the brain has also been related to cognitive slowing. The small vessel changes in the brain are most commonly attributed to this type of dementia that we call vascular dementia. So over time, these little tiny, the diameter of a piece of hair can get clogged up with cholesterol. They can kind of close up from inflammation. They can break off under high blood pressure. They cannot get enough blood flow from low blood pressure. And what you actually see is that over time, the they can start off to be kind of silent, but then we can see signs of confusion, brain fog, balance issues, urinary incontinence. And there can be kind of a building up to almost a watershed moment where someone then has a stroke or there is an event. So can this be reversed? No, not, not really. If we get blockages in the heart, we know that we can shunt those. We actually have the ability through modern medical science to go in there and to put in a balloon and help spread the blockages out to the side. We can uh, bypass another vessel and grafted on there. We don't yet do that in the brain. So that's very important to know. What we think about is reducing the damage as soon as it's visible. So if I had a patient who came to me who had swelling or leg heaviness on one side, I would be wanting to get them to a cardiologist, to a vascular neurologist immediately so we can talk about how to reduce that damage. Some of what we know works is the early detection and making sure someone is taking their blood pressure, their cholesterol, their fluid pills exactly as prescribed, not even missing one day. We know that compression socks are actually an evidence-based uh, intervention and movement 
part of the issue with venous insufficiency is sedentary lifestyle. So what that means is the opposite is going to be true. So if a lack of movement is part of what is causing the congestion and the inflammation, then we want to get people moving more. Now, this doesn't mean people necessarily have to go out and to, uh, you know, get a trainer and spend hundreds of dollars going to the gym, just trying to move your body more today than you did yesterday would be good enough. So what I want you to know about this lecture is that the way neuropsychologists think about these kind of diagnoses is tiny vessels, big impact. Whatever happens in the eyes, the ears, the kidneys, and the feet, these are all windows into the vascular health of the brain. Now, what does this mean for President Trump as an individual? Well, I have not evaluated him. I don't have his medical records. Um, and I think it's important to remember that there are limits to what we can infer about private people based on public information. So I am not offering you this information today as any kind of political statement. I'm just saying many of you probably have been diagnosed with venous insufficiency. And when you see the president has it, it's like, oh, piques your interest. You might want to know more. The way I would interpret this at the end of the day is that it is a bit of a warning sign and that we want to be extra on top of that person's circulation all throughout their body. I hope you join me next time and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Bye.